to remind everyone that today is uh, the first Sunday of the month and designated discretionary fund Sunday. Um, uh, the, uh, donations to the discretionary fund should be placed in the plate, and if it's a check, it should be uh, noted as discretionary fund in the memo line. Uh, any loose funds will also be going into the discretionary fund. And for those of uh, our people, members of home, you can pay via PayPal or Zelle and make the same notation in the memo line. Thank you.
us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people may offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run <clears throat> without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Psalm 126, verse 1 to 9. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth. When they breathe their last, they return to earth. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. Who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord shall reign forever.
Holy Gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to Jesus Christ. Christ. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one. Besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Set sight on being active, a 
about becoming those who were dressed in white robes, standing before the throne of God, then we too must live now as devout, as worded, and useful people. All Saints Day shows us the inclusive nature of God's kingdom. It's about people from disparate cultures, different races, different classes, different sexes, and different sexual orientations. The most powerful people and the most marginalized people, all within an egalitarian community of faith and love and grace. I am not um, going to share with you some of the things I planned to earlier this week because um, Carmen watches me pouring over articles and things that come in uh, to my computer every week. And this came about Tuesday, Election Day. It's certainly not partisan, but it is about the Kingdom of God, and it was so good I wanted to share this with you. After months of divisive rhetoric, ugly accusations, half-truths and untruths, it finally comes down to Tuesday. We vote for men and women who will guide our nation and our state for the next two, four, and six years. There's a lot at stake in this election year, but in today's gospel, Jesus crystallizes this election into a single issue. You are not far from the kingdom of God. So we prepare to vote this week. We need to spend some time prayerfully considering how far are we from the kingdom of God? What remains to be done to realize God's vision of humanity, a humanity that welcomes all, that respects all, that lifts up all? How far are we from the kingdom of God? What attitudes and biases prevent us from creating a nation committed to justice, a citizenry that embraces its moral and ethical responsibility to the poor and to the vulnerable, a community that sees God even those even in those we vehemently disagree with. How far are we from the kingdom of God? Do we see and hear the voice of Jesus in our public discourse, in our budgets, in our relationships with other nations and peoples? How far are we from the kingdom of God? Are we voting with our wallets or with our consciences? Are we voting based on what works for our interests or on what works for the good of all people? Do we presume that God is exclusively on our side or on the side of every human soul? Will we be any closer to the kingdom of God after Tuesday's election? That is the issue. This election day considers the words of the late Dr. Martin Luther King, who spoke about the nation's call to create a beloved community that comes from the Gospel of John. And it will require a qualitative change in our souls, as well as a quantitative change in our lives. Dr. King explained that at the heart of the beloved community is love. Love is creative and redemptive. Love builds up and unites. Hate tears down and destroys. The aftermath of the, of the fight with fire method is bitterness and chaos. The aftermath of the love method is reconciliation and the creation of the beloved community. Physical force can repress, restrain, coerce, destroy, but it cannot create and organize anything permanent. Only love can do that. That is the challenge we take on this week, to make our nation a beloved community through the love of God and the love of one another with our whole heart, our soul, mind and our strength. May our voting this week bring us at least a step or two closer to realizing the kingdom of God in our America. I thought it was worth sharing with you. And so, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Will you join me in standing as we affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed?
who are in the great race today, and all those who are unable to be with us as they cry from crossing the lines. For all in this parish, for Father Peter Lamb, who has been received into your loving arms of mercy and the blessed rest of everlasting peace, for Dr. Nancy Lamb, for Linda Boyd, Jean and Sandra Schleck, Jean Walsh, Wayne Innes, Grace Noble and Daisy Jesus, Vincent Longborough, Helen McShane, Jack Pesciano, Catherine Magruder, Richard Evan and Jill Fine, Yvonne Critchlow Parkins, Jim McGuire, Jeffrey Kerwin, Gail Karabi, Robin Jill Borisich, Jackson Borisich, Andrea D'Angelo, Carol Jean Laurie and David Palazzo, Sabino D'Agostino, Bobby Valios, Nancy Lewis, Deborah Poole, Martha Martin, Marcia Tankovich, Nick Abate, Deborah Matlin, Rui Basmaji Sr., Lynn Pagano and family, Jack Collins, Carol O'Shaughnessy, the Reverend Vivian Lamb, Jason Connor, Maria and Ed Barnes, Danielle Toscano, Rick Rubenstein, Carol Hudson, Anna Crespo, Rachel, Emma, Juliana, and Riley Midville, Christine Gonzalez, Ellen Shapiro, Patricia Longo, and Michael DePaulo. And then remembering all those we love from ages past. John Karabi, Charles Dietz, Elsie Palese, Douglas Palese, Grace Reinhold, Dick Palese, John Ogilvie, Rita Ogilvie, Esmond Ogilvie, Robert Moran, Father Robert Moran, Connor Moran, Joseph Moran, Jean Clancy, Marjorie McHugh, Harriet McNeil, Ray McNeil, Catherine Minicol, Ivy Roker, Robert Roker, George Kwame, Dora Sweeting, Mary Roker, Bruce and Mary Sweeting, Warren and Ruth Pritchard, Francisco and, and Gabriella Salon, Mara and Jose Arguana, Mila and Jesus Cal, Juan and Violet Salon, uh, Guadalupe and Walter Cowles, Cecilia and Billy Borja, Mariano Salon. Please join with me in concluding with the welcoming prayer found in your voice. Holy Spirit, living within us, guide our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship with us at Christ Church. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcome in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you to fully reach our lives. And most of all, of our lives, this is the place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess our sins against you, with all our glory and beauty. By what we have done, and by what we have done from the night, we are not looking at our own hearts. We are not looking at our neighbors. We are a true lie for the sake of your son and our society. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be like you and love you and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins, my Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you with all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Captain, peace be with you. David, peace be with you. Helen, peace be with you.
I'd be happy to offer prayers of thanksgiving for birthdays and anniversaries, prayers for healing, or whatever your heart is. Great. I lay my hands upon you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Beseech now, Lord Jesus Christ, to sustain you in his presence, to drive away all sickness of body, of mind, or of spirit, and to give you that victory in life and peace that will enable you to love and serve him here and now, that you may know the healing power of his love. Children may all be out of the race today, but Catherine is going to speak to us for a couple of moments about stewardship because it's November and time for those messages. I miss the kids. I miss the kids too. It's not the same with that.
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave his life for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
Let us pray. Eternal God,